Another um, question I get is, um, is kind of an intramural debate in the intelligent design community. Uh, Darwin's theory concerns evolution by random mutation and natural selection. But kind of a side note of his theory is the idea that all organisms living today have descended from ancestors in the misty, misty past. That uh, presumably there was only one kind of living organism in the ancient earth and throughout time it gave rise to whole bunches of different organisms. Some in the intelligent design community don't like the idea of common descent uh, and they think there's no good evidence to show that it's correct. Me, I've written a number of times that I think that the evidence for common descent is good and it you know, I'm happy to accept it uh, for purposes of argument. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the reasons I do that are a, a couple. In trying to explain evolution, there are two general kinds of things that you have to explain. The first one is the similarities between two different kinds of organisms. And the other is the differences between the two different kinds of organisms. Common descent is an attempt to explain or to account for the fact that many organisms have very similar sorts of components and many similar organs and bones and, and such. Random mutation and natural selection is an attempt to explain the differences between organisms. That is, how did birds get wings? How did an elephant get a trunk? And so on. Even if they do have similar biochemical pathways and being uh, vertebrates, they have bones and, and so on. In my view, the similarities, well, if, the, if organisms did descend from a common ancestor, you, uh, that might explain the similarities pretty well. And so I'm happy to kind of grant that uh, until something comes along and, and shows it's uh, clearly not true. But I focus my arguments on the differences between organisms because it is random mutation. Uh, random mutation is the part of Darwin's theory that pretty much carries the whole philosophical and even theological weight of his argument. Common descent that's an interesting you know, idea about nature, but it, it really doesn't explain very much. It just said that there was an ancestor that had some features, and now in the present, a descendant has those features, but it doesn't say where the ancestor came from, and it doesn't say how the descendant changed from the ancestor. So just saying common descent doesn't explain the most important part of how we get from uh, a more a plain ancestor to one with a, a lot of uh, new and interesting uh, features, such as wings or eyes and so on. Darwin's mechanism of random mutation and selection was the key to try to explain where these new sophisticated features come from. And I like to keep my uh, focus on that because it's been my experience that uh, Darwinists will be happy to talk all day or argue all day with you about common descent, but they run like you know vampires that see a clove of garlic uh, when you ask them to explain, well, how did random processes and selection make an eyeball or make a flagellum or, or so on? And uh, so I like to, to keep it focused there. I admit that uh, my colleagues in the ID mo movement do raise uh, good objections against common descent, but I'm willing to grant it for the sake of argument uh, and focus on the mechanism of evolution.